So we're about ready to hit a uh, heat wave stretch and uh, we're going to start really seeing some rapid uh, growth stage differences out here in our fields. Um, so we're really pushing uh, the physics. I'm going to go over some of the things I previously talked about, but why this system works. Um, what I've said in our talks is, you know, if you've got a living room uh, with a light bulb, if you turn it on, it's going to light up the whole room. And what that phenomena is, it's similar to radiant light, but that's why it's important to have a certain amount of spacing uh, to have enough energy. So they're almost touching, but we're getting some of that radiant light. So even if some of these beans are right underneath here, they're going to get that light from the left side. So the other aspect is the physics. So imagine a tractor, a hot farm, pulling down a 300-foot track. If you went out there and tried to make that happen for another 10 minutes, that tractor would blow up and catch on fire and you'd be, you know, you wouldn't have a tractor anymore. That's basically what we can do in wide rows and high fertility like we are following manure. Um, if I had this thick of wheat solid, it would lay down. No questions asked. And that's where we get this elasticity. You can see these uh, uh, straw, you know, whatever you call it, the stem. Your wheat heads are right here in the boot right now. And because it has that space, it will grow back up and actually temper the wheat. So because this wheat isn't solid, it doesn't have to race its competitors, the other wheat, and it doesn't, uh, you know, artificially grow taller through competition. It can get all the light that it wants. That's why it's coming out and it's grabbing that energy back. So it actually shortens that wheat a little bit, just like if you plant one corn plant by itself and it puts 15 years on it, it's going to be Gary, Gary Coleman working out. It's going to be six and a half, seven feet tall. If you're putting 20 inch rows at 50,000, that same hybrid is going to be 11 feet tall. So what that allows us to do is get more yield, poor space or footprint. So for the footprint here is 19 inches out of 60. So that's like 31% of the footprint. But I go on and on about the actual plant architecture of this. So these are starting to crook it up now, but we're going to have somewhere about 35 inches in a half circle. So you've got about 50, 60 inches of surface area of wheat heads, but we have enough radiant sunlight for the soybeans to still be okay. So we can still capitalize on getting them on early. So just imagine if we do have a frost, we're not really going to be worried about these beans dying now because we're going to get some thermal equity there. But these beans are planted early, they're going to root down deep, and they're going to be a lot better than beans planted later. You know, even May, late May, especially double crop beans. But this whole system works on these physics of, of kind of finding out these barriers of how far we can push it. This wheat can tiller really hard and still be okay. We can plant the beans early, but they still get enough light so they don't grow crazy abnormal and the timing is to where the beans get so tall and we get the wheat out of the way so it's all time and space and just getting values per day so if you know me i'm just a high strung guy you know there's 1414 minutes a day there's somebody somewhere in the world that's doing a lot better than you and i every minute of the day we need to be thinking about that in our fields how we can actually get value so we can think you know, there's two ways of thinking about this. The neighbor pulled in the other day, said, you know, if this takes off, you're going to overproduce. I'm going to be a world of problems. The, the overproduction or producing more isn't the motive here. It's about efficient production. So a reduced wheat seeds, uh, time and space, taking care of our herbicide risk, reduced bean seeds, just gets us in a better part of the graph to where our costs are low on each variable, but we're getting more production. So I think that's where we get stuck sometimes when we're in this three to five more bushel mindset is, you know, if we're already at these variable costs and we're trying to get another three bushels, you know, we barely get much back. But if we follow that curve way back and start to find all these scenarios where we can really cut back cost, but get more value um, and add them up, looks better. Anyway, thanks for watching. Appreciate people watching this day by day. Uh, this is pretty cool, and I think it's really important uh, when you come out here to see what's going on and uh, get a good understanding of what's going on so you can have, um, you can improve upon it the next year. So, anyway, 
as I go on, little tangent, we're working on a uh, service for confined feeding operations where we're going to take their manure, take their deads, um, get a, a highly valuable nutrient product, biochar, and I think we can take that product and actually install it in the ground and seed at the same time and spread this. So even if I don't have it next year, what I'd really like to do is to be able to ban my fertility in a strip till machine and right outside of that about four or five inches on each side. So if that strip's about 10 inches wide, I want a good stand of wheat right on the outside. And that wheat will spread out and I could use that same exact setup for a high speed soybean and actually have a little bit more beans here in the center to expedite canopy closure there. Um, because I really like from a physics standpoint, from a crop architecture standpoint, I think we've got it dialed in uh, to where we can maximize the elasticity of both crops. You know, I can't push wheat too much further or it's really going to hurt the soybeans. So you can only go so far and it starts hurting everything else and collectively it doesn't help. But I think we can speed up and scale up and start utilizing free products. It's going to be really cool when we can get a uh, liquid mobile uh logistical answer from our manure um what we can do with a system like this so all right back to work see ya